So some of you may have seen the Cecropia moth before, North America's largest native silk moth and quite a beauty at that. Enthusiasts spend the winter searching the trees for cocoons, but how do these moths come to be? Well, today I'm going to show you how it all begins. Here are some Cecropia eggs. They are cream colored with a touch of maroon and they are fertilized as the moth lays them. So if a moth dies, the eggs left inside her will not be fertile. And today, here you can see our very first hatchling. Let's take a look at the newborn caterpillar. The first instar of a Cecropia caterpillar is completely black, yet already is adorned with little spikes to help protect itself. Its very first meal is part of the egg it just emerged from. In order to hatch out, they must eat a hole in the egg to escape. Normally, the newborn caterpillar would find itself already on a leaf, but since I am raising these, I will have to now move him to some freshly washed leaves. And for this batch of babies, I will be using red maple. So I'm using a very fine paintbrush to move them. This is the safest way without damaging them, as they are so very delicate at this stage. I don't have enough hands, so I will move him off camera. Now that he is successfully on his leaf, he should find a nice spot and hopefully begin eating in the next 24 hours. Here you can see he has decided to do a little roaming around. This first instar is incredibly tiny, only about two to three millimeters, and it is hard to appreciate how small they actually are since I have magnified them quite a bit. Let's see if I can get a nice close up. Every time this caterpillar sheds, it will be a different color. These sheds are called instars, and most silk moths like the Cecropia have five instars. It will eventually be as large as a very thick human finger. I have a few others that have made their way out now and found spots for resting comfortably. Only a fraction of the eggs have hatched out so far and they do tend to emerge in groups, likely due to the difference in time of when they were first laid. The adult moth tends to lay eggs sporadically in small groupings. So there will be a lot of interesting changes and growing to come so stay tuned, turn on your notifications, and if you haven't already, subscribe so you can see how this little caterpillar grows all the way up.